Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host, Kirsch One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today, we talk about the Men of Iron. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k content every single day, and if you have any suggestions, comment down below. Now, stay to the end of the video because we do have a uh, special announcement. But with that said, let's get into 40 Facts on the Men of Iron. The Men of Iron are the ancient artificially intelligent machines created by mankind during the height of humanity's first interstellar civilization. Although illegal in the Imperium, few truly understand why these machines are banned. Some in the Inquisition and even fewer Imperial historians know the true history of the Men of Iron. Between the 15th to the 25th millennium, humans saw an enormous growth in scientific knowledge and technological power unrivaled by the Imperium to this day. Along with the birth of mutant navigators, standard template constructs, and these men of iron, humanity was able to leave Terra and conquer a large part of the galaxy. They were able to establish tens if not hundreds of thousands of colonies throughout the Milky Way, and these colonies were nurtured by the powerful and fully autonomous intelligent robots intended for both labor and combat. But this technological success and human expansion came to a sudden end when the men of iron, the AI that were designed to serve mankind in their quest of exploration, somehow became corrupted and turned against humanity. The men of iron unleashed a terrible war upon almost every human world. This ancient conflict, remembered only as the cybernetic revolt, saw both sides use fearsome weapons of mass destructions on each other. These included the mechanivores, massive thinking machines capable of lifting entire continents and ripping open chasms on planetary surfaces that extended down to the world's core. The mechanivores could even absorb space-time itself as a form of data. Worse still were the serpentine machines called sun snuffers that wrapped around a planet's atmosphere and then uncoiled into a great structure larger than the rings of Saturn that seemed to devour the stars themselves. And perhaps the most ubiquitous and dangerous of the weapons of this terrible war were the omniphages, swarms of intelligent, microscopic nanomachines that could consume everything across the surface of a world in only a solar hour. All of these technologies that once provided humanity with the power necessary to harness the natural energies of the cosmos were now terrible cybernetic monsters. Luckily, humanity was able to survive the cybernetic revolt, and is speculated that this victory over the Men of Iron was due to a galactic allegiance with some kind of Xeno race that eventually won them the war. Nevertheless, the damage to interstellar human society was catastrophic and shattered much of humanity's hard-worn economic strength and political unity. Weakened by their machines, the terrible tragedy would be made worse with the birth of Slanesh. Widespread fear and revulsion towards artificial intelligence swept across the ancient human colonies. Those planets still able to create AI would see the technology banned or erased from their records, and any men of iron not corrupted were destroyed, or so humanity thought. Blueprints on the construction of AI survived the technological purge. Even some fully functioning men of iron managed to remain hidden or locked up throughout the ages. These ancient destructive machines, as well as any new sentient mind created using long forbidden technologies, is known as a silica animus by the Imperium of Man in present day. Tradition holds that such unholy constructs are inherently evil, and a perverted abomination in the sight of the Omnissiah. Adeptus Mechanicus religious doctrines state that the machine spirit of a silica animus is a twisted mockery of the soul of a man, treacherous and insane, and under Imperial law, any such AI is to be destroyed on sight. In recent times, the blueprints, or the STC, on how to create one of these legendary men of iron was discovered by Colonel Commissar Ibram Gaunt on the world of Menazoid Epsilon during the Sabbat World Crusade. However, the device had been tainted by chaos, and the robots it produced were misshapen monstrosities that attacked humans on sight. To prevent the use of these robots, Gaunt destroyed the device. Aside from small speculative encounters by rogue traders and inquisitors on the fringes of the Imperium, the most devastating and recent accounts of widespread conflict between humanity and the Men of Iron is the ubiquitous conquest of the Caucasus Wastes. One of the last great battles of the Unification Wars 
which brought all of Terra under the Emperor of Mankind's control, the conquest of the Caucasus Wastes was expected to destroy the mutant oligarchs who ruled the area. The Caucasus ruler's power was based on scores of relic technologies and the terrible weapons in their possession, which dated back to before the Age of Strife. While its military forces ranged from the armored, gene-augmented, or Cassie troops, roughly analogous to the Emperor's Thunder Warriors, to the narcotically enslaved covens of Psykers. Their strongholds were concealed kilometers deep beneath the hollowed-out mountains of the Wastes and shielded from attack from above by near-impregnable power-field webs. An attempt by the Imperial forces to take the enemy's mountain strongholds by storm earlier in the Unification Wars had been met with bloody defeat with a loss of almost 10,000 Thunder Warriors and more than a million other casualties. When the Emperor returned, he had six entire proto-legions of the Legion of Sestardi, along with a mass force of Lego Custodes, with the Emperor himself leading them, and countless other tributary armies, mechanized battalions, and warrior bands beneath the raptor and lightning banner of unification. But the first thrust upon which all else would depend, the Emperor entrusted to the 18th Legion, later known as the Salamanders. Although the decision to utilize what they considered to be a largely unknown and untested unit in so vital a role was questioned by many within the Imperial Command, the Emperor's will was obeyed. The Salamanders would carry the assault, utilizing scores of freshly created gigantic termites, subterranean boring machines fitted with recently acquired technology from Mars. The full force of the Proto-Legion some 20,000 Astartes was committed to what was widely believed to be a suicide mission to destroy the vast geothermal furnaces which provided power for the enemy's impregnable defenses. These were housed far below even the subterranean strongholds and known of only through ancient legend in a hundred kilometer long string of vast artificially created caverns known as the Tempest Galleries. Once they were ready, the Salamanders saluted their emperor and calmly mounted the untested Martian war engines of the Mechanicum and pierced the dark earth and rock at the edge of the wastes, disappearing into a deadly and unknown world. Soon, all signals were lost, and not even the power of the Imperial Psykers could penetrate the turbulent depths to maintain contact with the Space Marine's assault forces. Hours stretched into days, and days became weeks, and nothing was heard from the assault force, while the vast armies of the Emperor waited in immediate readiness for the grand attack. But no sign or signal came. Sadly, Almost four-fifths of the Salamander's Legion's task force had survived the journey to their objective, the rest being destroyed by the plethora of environmental hazards, crushed like eggshells between the grinding tectonic plates or incinerated by seas of magma when their shields failed. Those who breached the caverns of the Caucasus Tempest Galleries found a strange, imprisoned world as alien as anything the expeditions of the Great Crusade would find among the stars. Vast kilometer-high spindle machines turned over caged seas of molten metal drawn from the planet's core, while inhuman machines scuttled like spiders. In this airless furnace beyond mortal endurance, the legionnaires of the 18th found no warriors of the Ethnarch to contest them, for nothing human had set foot in this hell for millennia, but rather the defenders of these sleepless engines were the men of iron. Fire black and service automatons reacting to the outsider's threat as antibodies would against any invading infection in a living body. Incredibly strong, and built to withstand the ravages of the firestorm that surrounded them, each would have overmatched even the battle automatons of the Mechanicum's legal cybernetica in size and power, being products as they were of mankind's ancient and technological advanced past. There were thousands of these men of iron, and all turned on the Astartes of the 18th Legion in an implicable and unceasing attack. Neither plasma nor melta weapons could breach their armor, while boulder shells rippled across like rain. Only massive kinetic force applied at close range against their articulating joints was able to disable them, a lesson that cost the 18th hundreds of lives to learn as they were forced into a running battle of attrition with the relentless machines, and cut off when many of their termite carriers were targeted and crushed by the colossal articulated toothed metal spheres used by the ancient workings to tunnel and expand the galleries. The salamanders held out with a mixture of stoic resilience and suicidal fury, maintaining discipline and order despite the onslaught, while individual legionnaires hurled themselves willingly to their deaths to grapple with the killing machines 
so that they might be destroyed and their brother's lives saved. Fighting now for survival from gallery to gallery, they collapsed tunnels and severed the silicate webs behind them to impede their pursuers and buy themselves time. But their casualties were huge, with thousands having perished within the first dozen hours of the conflict. But the precious time they had purchased with blood would be spent well by the survivors, for it would be neither the Legion's immense resilience nor its willing sacrifice that would see them victorious, but their intelligence. The Salamanders began to first use the wreckage of the attacking machinery that surrounded them as salvage to repair and augment their own expended war gear, and soon escalated to tearing from the automatons their central control systems, repairing them sufficiently to be sent crashing back into their own ranks as mindless berserkers. This proved only the start. Power conduits were redirected and machine death traps created. Lightning rods conducting the power of the howling electromagnetic coronas above them were fashioned into improvised harpoon weapons to burn out the hearts of the large machine beasts. Rivers of molten metal were redirected into service tunnels. Automatic chambers comprised to detonate like miniature suns, shattering engines that had endured for tens of thousands of Terran years. Soon, something like a stalemate had been achieved, but at a terrible cost, for less than a third of the Legion's original number remained, and yet the body of the vast system had been badly wounded, but a mortal blow was not yet struck. In the inaccessible depths, the ancient artificial intelligence that bound the Tempest galleries together was manufacturing fresh robotic soldiers for their cause, and that was something the Legionnaires of the 18th could not match. Realizing their strategic reality, the Legion hatched a plan to commit its forces to a single, coherent attack and destroy the Tempest galleries or die trying. The plan was to attack and cripple the central power transmission node in the largest of the gallery chambers yet discovered, the reason being that even if the vast generator spindles were not put out of action, it would sufficiently interrupt the flow of energy to the Ethnarch's defense far above. A two-prong assault strategy was devised. The first division would mount a series of diversionary attacks at other locations to confuse the enemy. Once this was underway, the second, larger division would assault the power node. It was assumed that while survival was uncertain for the space marines of the 18th legion, death for the central assault force would be certain. For this reason, the 18th legion surviving commanders acquiesced to the wishes of the legion's rank and file and assigned legionnaires to it by lottery. Not because they had no volunteers for the main assault force, quite the contrary, but because it was the wishes of all to take part. When the assault came, the legionnaires thundered from their defensive holdouts, many armed with improvised power fist, thunder hammers, shock cannons, and cutting saws, fashioned from the shattered remains of fallen men of iron. Attacked suddenly from many fronts, the inhuman intelligence which oversaw the Tempest galleries responded with cold machine logic efficiently dividing and dispatching its forces to deal with the threats. The fighting was savage, but the plan was working, and the concentrated force of the main assault group managed to smash its way into the great gallery, its few remaining dreadnoughts leading the way. Like a hive of ants crudely kicked open, the men of iron responded in a tide of scorched black metal and snapping servo claws, slamming into the salamanders head-on across the silicate bridges suspended between the sea of fire below and the hurricanes of lightning far above. Bodies by the hundred, machine and legionnaire alike, fell broken into the burning abyss. Severed power cables sparked furiously. Mechanical bodies exploded in sheets of fire and shrapnel, while spilled blood vaporized to steam in the superheated air. Slowly, torturously, the legion fought its way to the towering power node at the center of the gallery, buying each meter of ground taken with dozens of lives. It was then that the Kraken arose from the depths. A vast, articulated beast machine appeared, the greatest of the robotic engines that maintained the Tempest galleries. Sheeted in armored scales of synthetic black diamond, molten metal running off it like water. Its coils could have crushed a battle titan and were more than sufficient to enwrap and shatter the silicate bridges on which the Legion fought. Their weapons utterly useless against this new foe. Survivors were forced to attempt a fighting retreat they knew was futile, as one by one, the silicate strands were severed and hundreds more fell to their doom. What occurred next can only be guessed at, but the last garbled transmission from the Great Gallery 
was one of a huge, grav-propelled tunneling sphere used by the Tempestus automatons crashing through the gallery wall and plunging past the Kraken engine and directly at the node Nexus. It is believed that the only possible explanation for this is that one part of the diversionary attack group had used the confusion of the battle to gain control of one of the colossal serrated tunneling spheres and used it as a last-ditch weapon. Regardless of the cause, whether legion action or the calamity of one of the robots gone haywire, the node structure exploded, collapsing the gallery around it and blowing out numerous surrounding caverns and tunnels and creating the earthquakes and tremors felt across the region. The explosion also appeared to have murdered the governing AI of the galleries, for in the aftermath, the men of iron shut down, the machinery stilled, the vast spindle generators sinking slowly and silently into the fires below, never to turn on again. And with that, the Imperium came out victorious from the last major battle against a full force of men of iron. Humanity would have smaller encounters during the Great Crusade, but never suffer as much casualties as the conquest of the Caucasus Wastes. Later on, during the Horus Heresy, Adept Lucas Chrome, a forge master of the mightiest forged temple of the city of Mundus Gamma on Mars, secretly constructed a deadly war robot known as the Caban Machine, which was built using forbidden knowledge of the Men of Iron. Despite his best attempts to keep the project concealed from his contemporaries, there were rumors of his work that he was pursuing his forge. Each time a rumor of his machine surfaced, the data conduits whispered the name Caban a play on the ancient Egyptian word for their god Horus. This implied that the Caban machine had been built in the service of Horus Lupercal. Eventually, Adap Chrome unleashed his creation upon the plasma reactors controlled by the Loyalist Mechanicum, in a covert attack intended to test the Caban machine's abilities. Much of the opposition the machine encountered was destroyed until it was sighted by one of the Knights of Taranis, a loyalist knight house stationed on Mars. The Caban machine was engaged by one of the knights, but the loyalist war engine struggled against the formidable sentient machine. After the plasma reactors exploded, the Caban machine seemed to suddenly disappear without a trace, but unfortunately, it would later be discovered intact by an innocent cargo hauler by the name of Quintus, who was in turn discovered by the forge master Chrome and his Skatari forces. Chrome had his foul creation turn his weapons on the lowly menial and execute him. Chrome, after successfully testing the Caban machine, commanded it to seek out and terminate one Dahlia Synthera, a young Terran girl bestowed with very unique psychic ability to subconsciously tap into the total sum of knowledge housed within the Immaterium. The Caban machine, following one failed attempt on her life, finally tracked the girl down near the entrance of the Noctis Labyrinthius. At that point, Cythera and her companions would have certainly died were it not for two knights of House Taranis, who had been tracking the sentient machine ever since the destruction of the plasma reactors. The knights succeeded in overcoming the traitor robot by outwitting its AI, but both of their own war engines were damaged in the resulting battle. Unfortunately, the Caban machine was not destroyed and it is unknown what happened to this horrific machine after the end of the Horus Heresy. And those were 40 facts on the Men of Iron. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to share it with your friends on Reddit or Facebook. It really helps out the channel when you do so, and we've been trying to put more um, work into the animation to most of our videos, which requires more time. So by you sharing um, posts on Reddit or Facebook, it uh, boosts up the channel and it helps us create more, uh, better quality content for you guys. So please share if you enjoy our content. Now, there is some extra bit of information that I didn't want to include in the 40 facts video or part of the video but I did want to um, include now um, and that is that back during the age of strife when the colonies of uh, humanity were separated uh, there was one colony in particular that became an empire called the Olamic Quietude I'm probably mispronouncing the last part um, but what made this uh, empire so special is that when it was encountered by the Imperium during the Great Crusade um, they saw that it was an empire basically of androids. The Imperium called them uh, robot overseers, but in reality it was just AI fusing together with humanity, which is 
and that's where my theory comes in, I believe that these were the men of iron if the men of iron would have never been corrupted by um, chaos. So in a world where the age of strife um, doesn't see men of iron turn against humanity, but actually fused with humanity, it would look more like the Olamic quietude. So I would really say, or I would tell you to check out the 40 facts on this awesome empire if you um, want to find out more about that empire because we did create a video for it I'll put a link down in the description below or above um, but yeah what makes that interesting is that um, you see that now with the Adeptus Mechanicus so if you look at Mars pretty much everybody that lives on Mars is half human half machine more machine than human if you check out our daily life on Mars you'll see that like yeah, most like the the most basic person has some type of augmentation and those augmentations are basically just body changing they don't have arms limbs um things like that so i think uh, if the adeptus mechanicus and the um cult mechanicus continues they're going to go the same way as the um, Olamic Quietude did and form like an empire of basically androids um, where you're neither machine nor man, you're, you're both. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting thing to talk about, especially now that um, we're talking about the Men of Iron. The other thing I wanted to talk about is now that you see the, the earth-shattering powers of the Men of Iron, just basically robots that could rip a planet in two, um, you see how, I wouldn't say insignificant, but you would see how, um, I guess, uh, weak this, mm, this uh, robot that we see in the Blackstone Fortress is. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's strong in the game, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be a really resilient fighter. But in reality, he is uh, nothing compared to what the Men of Iron used to be. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind when you're pay playing with them. Um, I think it's, I think his name is UR025. Um, interesting model. Uh, it really looks like an old school robot, uh, but nothing compared to the reality of what the Men of Iron used to be during the Dark Age of Technology. These guys were colossal uh, war engines um, that could destroy pretty much anything that stood in their way. Um, if we ever get an army of Men of Iron, I really do hope that um, GW creates some, you know, stampa size uh, Men of Iron. That would be absolutely awesome. And I wanted to take this time to announce the two winners of the subscriber appreciation giveaway. The Terminator Thousand Suns box set that um, we were giving away. Uh, that winner is that guy. Now the winner of the Tempestus Scions box set is that guy. Thank you so much for participating. If you did win, all you have to do is message us. It's better for you to message us on um, Facebook or Instagram. You could email us at onemindsyndicate1 at gmail.com. Um, but yeah, somehow get a, get a hold of us, give us your address, and then we'll ship it out to you. Uh, we'll talk more uh, when you message us. For all those that participated and didn't win, uh, don't worry. We have a uh, another subscriber appreciation giveaway coming up as soon as this Blackstone Fortress box set comes out because we are going to give it away. Uh, so stay tuned, subscribe. Uh, thanks for listening. Don't forget we have a Patreon. If you want to support us a little bit uh, on there, uh, jump on over to Patreon. That's a simple dollar a month. Uh, but if you can't, simply by liking, commenting, and sharing uh, on other sites, it helps out the channel. But with that said, this was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out.